What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today we have a very special interview. We've been trying to get organized for quite some time. I've been talking with the team at Latokan out in Russia and today we are finally going to sit down and talk with Valentin who is the founder of the project. I'm glad to have him on the call today. Um, like I said, we've been trying to schedule this for quite some time. So we're going to be talking about all kinds of different things related to the project, what's been going on with Latokan, uh, a lot of the questions that the community has given about the project. As many of you know, I did a video on it. I'm very optimistic on seeing where it can go. And I still have a lot more to learn about it as well. So I'm hoping that Valentin can answer a lot of those questions today and we can learn much more about the project. So it's going to be very free flow, just kind of learning about what's going on with them and uh, seeing where the project's heading. So Valentin, it's awesome to have you on here. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself, and how you got started with the project. Uh, hi to everybody. Thanks a lot for inviting. Uh, so I'm founder of uh, Liquid Acid Token Protocol and Platform, which uh, tokenize and uh, trade uh, assets in crypto. Uh, this is a universal protocol. It allows to trade um, asset range from stock, uh, from cryptocurrency stock, uh, commodities, real estate, and uh, even uh, works of art, and so on. Um, anybody can create his own application tailored to his asset. And uh, this uh, provide a big uh, value for investors. They can diversify their portfolios across asset classes. Um, and um, these uh, assets are comparable. Um, there is a, uh, a special way which uh, enforce link between asset and um, uh, token and um, investors understand this and um, uh, so it's a uh, very convenient for investors and for asset uh, owners it is a way for liquidity affect investors who are on the platform trading different uh, types of instruments try to make uh, arbitrage between them so if you list uh, your asset on our platform uh, it will get exposure to uh, investors I i'm talking a bit about uh, our future at the moment um, uh, we are trading 12 tokens which are linked to uh, stocks uh, and um, uh, commodities like gold uh, oil and real estate ETF. Uh, stocks includes uh, Apple. And um, at the moment, um, is um, uh, works um, not with via smart contracts. There's still our participation. In the future, this will be automated. Uh, this, there will be a ch chain of uh, smart contracts um, uh, connecting uh, custodian uh, with uh, 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 as token owners and custodian, which will be independent regulated uh, banks uh, until they exist. Um, so it's midterm. Uh, we'll execute trades to make delta hedging, uh, which means that uh, each token uh, will have its own uh, real asset, uh, which will be sold at a set date and cash transfer to token. So that's how it works. It's like forward. Yeah, and uh, uh, at the moment um, uh, we uh, tokenize 12 for instruments and we uh, kind of uh, use our cash uh, of La token to uh, make sure payments on a settlement date which is the 30th of uh, uh, November uh, this is the date when uh, owners of uh, these tokens will get cash equal to uh, value of uh, underlying asset and uh, uh, these uh, tokens are not uh, available for jurisdictions which can uh, which requires uh, regulation of um, uh, securities uh, so asset back tokens are not available for US, of course, uh, uh, for the restrictions for Singapore, for China, and so on. Um, so and uh, uh, utility tokens are completely different, and uh, uh, they do not um, uh, promise any participation in any future cash flow. Uh, they have uh, no um, value no uh, promise of failure 
no linkage to any assets. So it's uh, utility tokens, those which are used to pay for services for potential future services on the platform. So uh, that is um, uh, like a third is utility token that is a lot that is utility token. Um, a lot um, uh, is a uh, uh, utility token like uh, 300 other tokens which uh, made token sale. Uh, and uh, I, uh, so I, I just made a sm small overview of my business. Uh, now I can uh, go more about uh, the company or myself or about uh, uh, hot SEC issues. What do you prefer? <laughs> I mean, that was a great description. I think um, the one thing that you brought up that was really interesting is how kind of the transfers work. And I want to make sure I get it correct on this. Uh, when you're, for example, if I wanted to buy, um, you know, like Apple um, shares or something, it would be through a set date. You know, you go through it like a certain week or month and you make to that agreement and it's it's you would use the LA token to purchase that, correct? Um, uh, there are two ways how to make sure that um, uh, the money will be transferred uh it is crypto i'm talking about cryptocurrency transferred mm -hmm. to a uh, token owner uh and the more it can be done either by keeping cash sufficient uh to cover uh, uh, to cover this uh, or by buying a, a stock mm -hmm. so for each token so these are two ways um, uh, we will uh, work in the future to, in the nearest future, to make it completely independent from a lot of them. So there will be no risk of uh, the platform okay. um, in terms of uh, obligations to pay. Uh, there will be a custody, independent custody, which will manage this uh, and link of uh, and the chain of smart contracts. Awesome. Cool. Okay, well, yeah, definitely. I'd like to, uh, you know, kind of go and jumping back to it. I'd like to hear a little bit about yourself and everything. You gave a great description of Latok and we got a lot of topics to cover, but I'd love to hear about, you know, a little bit about yourself, um, Valentin, and like, you know, where you came from, how you've been building up this project and, uh, you know, how you really got here. So I've worked at um, capital markets for 15 years, uh, seven years at hedge funds. Um, uh, I was director of research for 200 million equity portfolios at Marquardt Spectrum, Switzerland uh, hedge fund. Uh, they, uh, I launched my hedge fund and uh, I had to create my own back office, uh, very complicated things. It's maybe half of um, uh, half of uh, IT system which are required for exchange, for example, it's back office. Uh, and then I created my home equity marketplace and uh, I built on top of this LA token on this uh, back office and uh, um, um, home equity marketplace. Uh, and um, uh, um, so my experience in uh, capital markets uh, get me a clear vision how uh, delivery of money to those who can make uh, more of it is very important. So there are people who have the money and people who can make uh, them, use them in a the most productive way to, to create new businesses or to increase its own productivity, in, in, invest in its education, whatever. And capital markets, um, uh, hedge funds, they try to predict future to try to predict uh, which country, which uh, industry, which company, uh, which technology will bring the most value and they move capital there. And uh, these companies have cash to uh, hire more people. So uh, people, uh, so everybody has more opportunities to work on a more productive um places more productive jobs and uh, this is the way how, how economy is speed up and the smarter this system work uh, the lower tra transaction costs uh, the uh, easier and uh, transparent access to this capital flows for asset owners uh, for companies and then everything speed up and move faster uh, and um, I love I love um, how it works. I love how to model the future uh, and uh, to um, uh, see how 
uh, you see uh, and to see opportunities, value creative opportunities, and uh, help other people to see these opportunities. Uh, that's why um, it will be very easy to trade on our platform. It is um, pretty easy now after um, kind of uh, passing KYC. So to, to make sure that uh, traders are not uh, residents of uh, regulated countries. Uh, then we allow very easily to trade. Uh, they will be very easy to compare many instruments, trade, show your performance, and other can follow you. So you can grow uh, followers base and they kind of share their performance with you. And it's easy to create your own fund and launch it and uh, manage it. And uh, um, it's all on blockchain. You don't need uh, uh, years to create structure, legal infrastructure, then uh, try to raise money, uh, proving that you have a big pay degree from Goldman Sachs. You just go and start trading, use your IP to use artificial intelligence, whatever. Mm -hmm. You get exposure to thousands, hundreds of thousands of instruments. So in the future, it will be, a, uh, it will include, um, I believe it will include uh, all asset classes that uh, has potential to be tradable, even those like uh, works part. Uh, so equities which are very well, and um, it will be a very low cost to trade them, uh, very low cost to list them, uh, very low cost to switch between asset classes to compare them to um, uh, have access 24 7 so i believe that uh, traditional exchanges will move to these technologies and we uh, we want to explore our right, well, sorry, there's a quick connection issue but we're going to go back to valentine so continue where you were last time we talked uh, so um, that there will be a um, I believe that uh, all assets will be tradable in um, the crypto uh, and uh, this will create many new user cases. So new products will be empowered with um, smart access to capital and uh, investors will be, um, uh, there will be more people who will understand uh, what is valuable. And um, there will be more opinion, which will uh, shape capital allocations and uh, uh, costs to become um, this kind of uh, um, investors will, will be lower. Uh, so, and, and uh, our, our large crypto research team, uh, which include uh, four McKinsey um, Deutsche Bank uh, alumni, uh, estimate that um, crypto capitalization will reach uh, $5 trillion by 2025. will be an um, uh, asset by tokens. And um, uh, this is a big uh, uh, driver for the industry development to uh, expansion of crypto currencies, uh, of crypto economy into fiat world. And uh, I believe that uh, currencies which will be used to trade these uh, assets, um, they, uh, that that will be the biggest user case for cryptocurrency. And the currency with um, high turnover, uh, stable and high turnover, will uh, be will compete with uh, existing fiat currencies. That's all. I completely agree with you on that. I think that, you know, I've learned, I've kind of come over time to be more optimistic about tokenizing things because not only is with the, the sense of decentralization, um, you're giving people the opportunity to invest in things they originally didn't have the opportunity to invest in. Uh, the biggest thing for me was real estate. That's something that you usually have very centralized, large scale investors putting money into. And I think that was something like this where it's tokenized and being able to put something like that as a sense of ownership on the Latoken platform, you can tokenize something that originally wasn't able to be distributably owned by people unless it was in something like an ETF. Um, so I think that this is, there's something, there's definitely a market for this. Um, I do wanna, however, hit you with a few hardball questions because I know people definitely wanna know these and get some answers to it. You were talking about fees earlier. Uh, how much of a fee do you have to pay to make a transaction over the platform right now? 
at the, at the moment it is zero we'll keep it zero for uh, for a year or so we will decide we, we the, the costs are fundamentally lower there this particular may lower 10 times answer that's and, awesome uh, to have. Is, uh, mm -hmm. what what other uh, numbers um, are interesting here that uh, for example on average which cost two to seven percent uh, in dollars uh, could be also cost zero zero or so yeah leverage trading uh, yeah, yeah. And leasing costs are now for private equities uh, three to seven percent of entire company value when they come to investment bank they kind of spend three to seven percent when they make token sale uh, it will be less than all point something so it's very low cost uh, to make listing uh, to get liquidity and liquidity uh, makes a premium 10 to 40 percent for private companies which became public so it's a growth and valuation and the same should happen with uh, less liquid assets like real estate or works of art because they have a huge transaction cost from 5 to 25 percent for real estate and for uh, works of art it's uh, 25 to 30 percent uh, which include commission of um, auction house it's normally 25 percent for so this very high uh, it, is, uh, very, very low liquidity mm -hmm. and this uh, decrease valuation so when you want to recognize it mona lisa the tokens can be traded every day anybody will be able to own a piece of mona lisa and exchange it low cost you know bringing kind of exotic markets like that like art i mean that sounds pretty interesting to tokenize something like that and uh and you know you're right on that in the sense of like the reason why it gets so expensive in finance and any kind of investment uh because you have so much middlemen in the way and when you tokenize something like this when you bring it onto a centralized platform like this and make it so there's a simple exchange between two parties i think that that simplifies a lot of the process and being able to tokenize your own assets um, the one thing I also wanted to bring up to and see if you um, if you could give me an answer to this uh, You were saying how originally there's a few certain countries that this will not be able to operate in as at least as of now um, What countries uh, can this specifically not it's predominantly probably like the United States and a few others Can it not operate in and then which ones are, are well known that it can operate in what large countries that have large economies could LA um, let token actually operate in so it's, it's less uh, regulated um, uh, in European Union uh, and more regulated in uh, United States. Uh, this asset bucket uh, tokens uh, will have to be registered in uh, Security Commission. Uh, it uh, will take some time. Uh, we will also, also need some licenses to be able to trade in the U.S. This um, uh, doesn't refer to LAT. LAT is a utility token. It's not uh, any cash flow to any asset. It's similar to Ethereum uh, way of utility usage. So pay transaction costs like Ethereum, or you pay for services like KYC or uh, potential tokenization uh, uh, after we get uh, uh, licenses needed for this uh, in USA. So U.S. Uh, contributors can use uh, our utility token. They can exchange it. There is no restriction. Uh, however, uh, the tendency is that uh, most of token sales uh, are closing the utility uh, tokens for U.S. just in case. Uh, we see that um, uh, SEC is uh, consistently uh, scrutinizing uh, uh, security tokens DAO which promises it to cash flow from its fund it's um, um, uh, Starcoin uh, which uh, promises it to uh, profits from uh, earnings of uh, stars or somebody and uh, other cases that somebody uh, uh, promised that they use uh, proceeds from token sale to buy uh, real assets like real estate or diamonds so they promised that uh, their uh, token is backed by real estate 
So it's a big difference. And uh, when um, um, retail customer in America see that something is a uh, bucket, something uh, a token that is explicitly has a value like future cash flow or uh, some asset, uh, then uh, the American uh, customer uh, thinks that uh, uh, regulators made the job that uh, this is the truth. That, uh, so, and that's why SEC uh, has to step in because uh, retail customers, they assume that this is the truth. And in order to make sure that this is the truth, a regulator uh, should um, re register this and double check. So, however, tokens which do not promise any cash flow, they explicitly wrote that there is no uh, value. Um, uh, there is just an um, opportunity to exchange it for future services. Uh, that's not uh, security. And uh, SEC is uh, acting consistently. They do not uh, do nothing uh, for utility tokens. However, the tendency is uh, token sales are, are, are closing. So yes, uh, we do not want to be now uh, the biggest uh, token sale still open for US, just not to kind of attract um, the biggest attention. So uh, see, we'll start to regulate uh, uh, utility tokens, which is uh, still unlikely so I talk it. I, I saw that uh, Tim Draper uh, said that uh, his uh, uh, video speech at the uh, Genesis conference uh, two weeks ago that SECs are kind of uh, very advanced. They understand that this is a technology which helps to uh, get uh, early adopters to engage them to build community uh, to. Uh, attract their support uh, for, for project development. Uh, and also this token has built in uh, a registry of uh, rights who owns this token. That's a uh, big, big advancement. Um, uh, so uh, I, I still do not expect that there will be a, a regulation will expand from SEC to utility tokens. However, uh, uh, Self-regulation should uh, grow, so there there should be uh, some rules of uh, transparency and um, mechanism to enforce them, to prevent scam, to prevent um, uh, people who were misled, uh, and uh, there should be a judgment what is misleading, what is wrong, uh, and uh, sometimes it's dif difficult to differentiate where the truth, uh, what what is just a small mistake. Where is an intended, uh, intended misleading, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, should be something self-regulated. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise there will be very uh, good proliferate uh, practices that will make unhappy many people, and this may force regulators to step in. So I, I believe that. Uh, uh, crypto community, crypto players should uh, dis discuss these uh, rules. Uh, that's why we invite to our uh, blockchain forum, blockchain economic forum in New York, 31st uh, of October, 1st of November, uh, to join our work group to discuss uh, uh, framework or to set up a seat with a leaders of associations and discuss how, how we can, what we can do there, discuss it with uh, uh, regulators, uh, so to make sure that they do not uh, uh, make uh, some bold movements, uh, which, which are not uh, in the best interest of the economy. Uh, and uh, so we invite uh, Nobel laureates uh, and uh, economists, uh, some of them confirm it, so the uh, top uh, seated uh, academics uh, who started to write about uh, blockchain, uh, the design of blockchain economics. And uh, so there will be a very smart discussion between academics and entrepreneurs. 
regulators, and also there will be um, uh, investors, of course, who are leading uh, in many aspects of the industry. Uh, there will be a talk, token sales presentations. Um, so uh, I invite uh, I invite to come to this conference. Um, we will be happy if you join. Uh, we'll send a VIP invitation. Um, well, I appreciate the offer. No, I mean, it's it sounds interesting because that is the one thing that I wanted to guarantee with the Let Token platform. To me, this whole idea of, you know, kind of bringing tokenization to ownership of assets, it sounds very interesting. Uh, yeah, the one thing I was just concerned about is just that issue of, you know, people going out there and, you know, falsely tokenizing certain assets. Um, if, you know, and what I think is cool too is, you know, you're, you're listening to the community, you're bringing people in and taking ideas uh, and making sure that from within the community, there can be that sense of self-regulation. There's a, there's a certain interest, you know, if you're an investor in the token, you have that interest in making sure the platform will last. And in order for it to last, it's going to need that self-regulation. So, you know, I think that... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just mentioned the good point. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. That uh, uh, the essence of protocol is to standardize and make a enforceable link between asset and the token. So the this which prevent fake tokenization. Uh, and uh, this standard uh, uh, will uh, be very convenient for investors. So if they see that this standard is applied, they understand that there's certain um, actions. Um, uh, uh, so, so uh, this a lot protocol make sure that there's a glass and it's enforceable. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, that was very good to explain that. And I mean, honestly, again, setting those kind of things from the get go and stuff are very important. So I think that, you know, having it tied with the token is very important. Um, and again, I mean, really, I mean, Valentin, this seems like a really interesting project. Um, it's one of the few ICOs out there right now that have grabbed my attention as someone who has traditionally invested in equities for years. I used to do stock trading for, I, got a, I think I started at the age of 13 or 14. I had a joint account with my father um, as early as I could do it. Um, I, you know, I did it for years. I was doing stock trading. And I, I got to this point where crypto came along and I was just like, I got so in touch with crypto. I'm like, man, I miss, I miss stock investing. I miss investing in all these different types of equities and assets. And man, I'm telling you, this has kind of rekindled the fire that I used to have in, uh, you know, investing in all these different asset classes. So again, I really hope that Latoken takes off. Um, I mean, you've done a great job of answering a lot of the questions that I've had about the platform. Um, you know, and I, I like the, uh, I, I'm trying to find it here. I have the chart up um, of, I had the chart up earlier where you were showing the, the expected growth and how you're calling for the figure of $5 trillion in assets being tokenized. I think it is a bold objective, but if you can build the platform promptly, it really could happen. Um, and it just depends so long as the regulation in certain countries work uh, and making sure that everything can run smoothly, the community, the community can find ways to self-regulate, make sure that investors are protected. And I, again, I always enforce people in you know my community and a lot of people are like, oh, we don't want regulation inside. We don't want that to be involved. It's necessary with exchanges and it's necessary with any kind of trading of assets. Um, especially multi-billion dollar assets that might be tokenized. So again, I think you all are doing a great job so far. I, I, I appreciate you answering a lot of those questions. Thanks a lot. Uh, very thanks for inviting me. Hope to see uh, you at New York at our Blockchain Economic Forum. And also our token sale is ending on 10th of October. So there's a few days uh, left to join it before we uh, start to listen on uh, exchanges uh, also this month. Thank well, you. Have a nice day. Oh, thank you. You too. Thank you for coming for the interview. Thank you all for watching. And uh, definitely go check out the uh, token sale website. Just check and see the project. Read the white paper a little bit. Read about the team. I think it's a very, very interesting project out of most of the ICOs I see. And if you watch my channel, you know I'm pretty skeptical on most ICOs. But this one looks pretty good. And it was very nice to have you on, Valentin. I appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, I hope we can talk more in the future.